This conference will now be recorded. Oh, just hit the core button. Yeah, man, I, you know, I appreciate you taking the time. I, I know you're a busy man, and like yeah. you said, getting out there hustling and grinding a little bit. Yeah, man, just got a nice little sweat and did a, a run on a, you heard of Runyon Mountain out here in L.A.? Runyon, Ooh. Runyon came. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, is that uh, where people gonna work out? Yeah, a lot of people go out there, work out, go, it's like a nice hiking trail up the mountain. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't know if my knees can take that anymore, man. I'm I'm, I'm a little a little long in the tooth, as the old folks say. <laughs> yeah, you, you you play ball as well? Yeah, so I play at the University of Kansas. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, cool. so I played outside linebacker here, started for about three years. Um, and then I went to the CFO for a very, very brief stint. <laughs> like yeah, like yeah. two weeks and they're like, Yeah, you gonna have to go, bro. <laughs> yeah. I feel it. I feel it. So, That's cool, so, man. We are we're all on our own journey, right? So most definitely, man. So now so you're out in LA now, but you're originally Florida, right? I'm originally, originally from Maryland, Silver okay. Spring, Maryland. And uh grew up, went to high school in Maryland and then went to the University of Florida. And then was in Miami oh. for another four years. So was in Florida eight years total. Oh, okay. So you're just going yeah. from nice weather to nice weather then? Yeah, I got very fortunate, man. Uh, I got very fortunate. It's funny because uh, my roommates, one was Josh Evans in, at University of Florida. He's from New Jersey. Oh. And, um, and then one of my best friends over at the University of Florida, John Bostic, he's from Palm Beach, Florida. And he ended up getting drafted to the Bears in Chicago. Ooh. freezing cold and then me and my my boy from the east coast who are used to the cold he went to jacksonville and i went to the dolphins so uh we got fortunate to be able to stay in florida in that in that good weather no doubt um well let me um i guess go ahead and jump into this and kind of hit my intro and then we can kind of dive into this a little more um hey guys what's going on this is pat brown i'm a financial advisor uh, with Edmonds Duncan out of Lawrence, Kansas, uh, Edmund Duncan Investment Advisors, and uh, played football for the University of Kansas, played there for, uh, I played there a long, long time ago. I uh, played outside linebacker, started for about three years, uh, was a team captain and met a lot of great people at the University of Kansas, and um, became very, very passionate about student or financial literacy for student athletes, which led me down this path of uh, talking to former student athletes with the hopes that current student athletes can learn the successes and failures from these uh, former student athletes and hopefully apply those and, and gain better habits. Uh, so one of the things I always also do is just read off uh, real quick the definition of uh, financial literacy, which is uh, the possession of a set of skills and knowledge that allows an individual to make informed and effective decisions with all their financial resources. So having said that, today I have a man, July, my, Make sure I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Is Jelani Jenkins? Perfect. Perfect. Sweet. So <clears throat> thank you for number one, uh, again, for doing this. I definitely appreciate that. Um, did some cyber stalking on you. And uh, <laughs> like I said, man, you, you're, you're the man. You're the man. So um, you originally uh, went as a free agent. I'm sorry, you were drafted by Miami Dolphins in the fourth round, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. And then played like we were talking a little earlier. Played uh, your your college years at the University of Florida, and then the high school. You know, track. You know, football was killing it. Uh, yeah. Then yes, good, Florida. Good, so good times. Yeah. So yeah, man. Thank you for being here. Um, I guess the kind of uh, right at the gate. Um, you know, financial literacy. When you think back to freshman sophomore year, did you ever have any type of exposure to uh, budgeting or credit or savings or anything of that nature? No, <laughs> not in college, no. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. until we actually got our checks at the NFL. Um, like the rookie symposium was when we first started really diving deep into budgeting, the financial literacy talk. And even then it was very beginner level work, so. Yeah. Um, so they never have any uh, coursework at all, like, uh, you know, at the university as far as, hey, athletes, here's something that you guys may want to know, because we didn't either. Yeah, no, nah, we, we did not. Nope, we did not. We we had opportunities. Like, I remember there was like a recruiting round, 
recruiter roundtable where companies would come in and set up shop and we'd go by and see what we're interested in and speak with them. But in terms of financial literacy, you had ex players come in. Um, I remember one time Fred Taylor, who was like the Gator great, he came in and spoke to the team about his issues with getting a financial advisor and the we've heard horror stories of doing <laughs> wrong decisions but in terms of teaching us how to uh budget uh create a good mental picture of a good healthy picture of money and what it you know how to use it um best we didn't we didn't get that necessarily enough so I guess then looking back then, um, the decision that you made in college, was it more or less uh, trial and error? Uh, you know, whether it's, you know, getting paid, your stipend and at the end of the month and, yeah. or at the end of the month and then, you know, not having it in a week later. I mean, that's yeah. like what used to happen to me back in the day. Yeah, it was trial and error. We we didn't really know we were doing. I, the remaining money that I had from that uh, stipend, mm -hmm was used for Chipotle and uh, pizza. <laughs> like, um, a lot of guys, especially the ones who were able to apply for the additional financial aid, I mm -hmm. wasn't able to get that. So I got like the bare minimum of what we got as uh, scholarship athletes. But yeah. a lot of guys, um, I mean, they were at like the Gainesville Mall going in, you know, looking real sharp uh, at the club on Saturday right. nights, you know, so we, that that type of uh, training and lessons and teaching we didn't really get for us. No. I, I hear you. I hear you. So, um, if you're thinking back, then what do you think were some of the worst financial decisions you made, and what were some of the best, if you had any? I think back in college, I didn't have enough at that point to really make too many bad financial decisions. Um, mm -hmm. I remember as soon as I felt like I had a little bit of something, I got me a Gucci wallet. I thought that was cool. Right. <laughs> so I think at that time, that was a really big deal uh, mm -hmm. for what I had. Um, and then in terms of good financial decisions, I think ultimately I was pretty decent at like saving. And um, like I said, the money that I used that was left over, it wasn't, I wasn't necessarily thinking big picture of like saving uh, right. or, or having it build on itself so it wasn't i wasn't even there yet but i was not like just spending it you know mm -hmm. yeah um, i guess i didn't have like a savings plan but naturally i was making decisions of how i used it um yeah. that were you know strictly for just food and college life so it sounds like you're a little bit more grounded just in your natural approach to life than you know some yeah, obviously we all got extreme friends who kind of went, like you said, crazy at the mall. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, that, that's good. That at least your temperament was as such that you're like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not spending this money uh, yeah. all willy nilly. Um, so looking back at college, do you wish? Uh, what are some of the things you wish you'd done different in regards to dealing with your money, or is there anything that you wish would have maybe changed? Or I think just learning more about it, um, mm -hmm. having the foresight before I had the money to uh, to learn more about it. And I, I don't know, we were so, I mean, our, our schedules were 24 seven pretty much booked up when it comes to yeah. class and then sports. So my major didn't really speak about financial yeah. literacy. Uh, yeah. We didn't speak about it necessarily in football. So I don't know who's at fault for that, um, but I wish, that I had the foresight, I had a mentor, somebody to start to teach me these things um, while I was in there. And I think one of the main issues is as student athletes, we're so led away from like speaking to financial advisors or speaking to agents. And because of like the potential predatory nature that exists for a lot of that. And so I understand it, but at the same time, we weren't, we didn't speak to them. So if our family and loved ones in our village at, at our homes weren't giving it to us, we didn't get that information. And then um, we couldn't get jobs or we yep. would lose eligibility. <laughs> yeah. So we literally, we didn't have job experience. We didn't have financial literacy uh, type experience. And if you're the, one of the uh, lucky 
or gifted or, you know, if you had the opportunity to play at the next level and go professional, um, you know, if you didn't get that information as growing up in your family, chances are you didn't necessarily get it in college unless you were in some kind of financial major. So it, it's tough. Bro, you, you hit on so many different uh, topics there. I'm, and I, I agree with you 100%. Um, and that's the way I see it. A lot of these, you know, the recruiting that, that starts up, you know, student athlete, you get recruited for these these programs, these big programs, and they bring you in and whatever your major is, they want to get you in it, but they want it to make make it conducive of the, the program's practice schedule. So, you know, you need to make sure your classes are done at this time, so you have time for practice, boom, boom, boom. And so there's nothing ever in there to say, hey, look, you know, maybe you should take a personal finance class or, you know, class dealing mm -hmm. with stuff that you're going to deal with, regardless if you make it to the league. Um, yeah. You know, there's nothing there, no guidance there for that. That's what I found, you know, 20 some years ago. And, and it sounds like not much has really changed, you know, listening to you talk and some of the other, you know, guys that I talk to. So, yeah, yeah. man, you hit a lot of points, man. A lot of points. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said, the biggest thing is they were preparing us for a potential for, for dealing with a financial advisor and making smart decisions in terms of vetting the right people for that. But it wasn't mm -hmm. so much like empowering our own minds to see it. You know, it was how to vet a person who does know, you know, so. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. You got to teach a man to fish. Don't just exactly. leave me and give me the fish. Um, exactly. So uh, I think, I'm trying to think, did I just ask you about uh, looking back? I don't know if yeah. I, want, I want to duplicate. So, okay, so next question would be, uh, how have the habits you formed in college affected life after college or have they, whatever? In terms of financial habits? Habits, yeah, for whether it's financial or just football. I mean, I know with yeah. uh, personal myself, you know, football have just, you know, you, you're able to deal with adversity quite a bit. I don't know if that's the same with with you as well or? yeah for sure i think one of the biggest things uh, that football really helps it with is uh and sports high level sports in general like you really learn how to focus um on a goal and you learn how to really be present um on like game day and like uh, practice and really block out everything else that's going around and that can be like a, a good thing and it can also be a negative thing sometimes yeah. uh um, and i think it's very positive in the next phase uh knowing that i can take that same type of uh skill set mm -hmm. and direct it into whatever profession that i want to in terms of focusing on something putting in the reps just like i do in the weight room yep. to get stronger yep. putting in the reps uh for whatever skill set is needed in that next industry um but then in the same breath like we're we're used to if there's you know, trauma physically, we're used to playing through it and kind of blocking it out to, to focus. Um, if there's trauma at home, we still have to block that out and focus. So I think yeah. for me, in that next phase, I also, in terms of focusing on like my craft and what I was doing, I still was blocking out a lot of the traumatic things that I had dealt with as an athlete that were lingering and causing me to be stressed out. And so once I learned how to like really dive into that world, um, mm -hmm through my own self-discovery and through like meditation and stuff and, and like helping my own mental health, then I was able to like fully be um, my best, the best version of myself. So yeah, I would say that that idea of like focusing on something, focusing on a goal and knowing how to put in the work to 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 make it happen. Yeah, no doubt. Um, that's cool. Um, yeah. So uh, again, looking back, uh, what are some of the pitfalls you hope uh, that your story would prevent to young student athletes out here you know what would you say to a younger your younger self if if you could yeah i you know one of the big things and this goes directly to like financial literacy and financial understanding mm -hmm. um shoot and i, I think it, it probably plays a, mu a bigger role as a professional athlete um so I, i'll kind of think of an overall lesson but i will touch on the professional athlete one i wish that i was told while I was in there uh, getting paychecks from the NFL to find some form of passive income outside of that so that when I did stop playing that I could interact with banks <laughs> and uh, you know get certain loans because they're seeing some kind of income coming in 
Uh, that was yeah. one of the things that I ran into was having a, a good solid foundation in the bank um, of money sitting there, but mm -hmm. because there was no passive income coming in, they weren't willing to do loans and stuff in terms of getting property, real estate, different things like that. I wish someone would have just told me to get something passive running. That that was a big lesson that I, I, I gotcha. want to tell everybody. Um, but overall, um, I would say for me, like I, I'm a mindset coach and I, I think it's so big to really um, start to discover who you are beyond athletics. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and it's, it's difficult while you're in the middle of that world, but I would say like really attach yourself to a vision, something that's magnetic for you, something that you're excited about beyond the game um, to where you can like really leverage that, that, uh, that excitement to better your, your play while you're playing, but mm -hmm. also so that when you do transition out, it, you don't feel like you're going downhill after right. you stop playing. Um, and you feel like there is more to life. Um, I think if no one's thinking outside or beyond the game, then once that transition happens, it feels like, um, like who am I? That question of who am I is a real question that uh, yeah, it's it tough is. to answer sometimes. You know, if you never thought about it. So, I think a lot of um, a lot of guys hit on that a lot. Um, we were just talk about the mental, the mental side of this, the mental health of it. Um, when you feel like you don't have anything left after football, you're, you know, it's like, well, what am I useful for at that point? Yeah. And so the fact that you kind of use that analogy to attach your, your mind to something else, something, something more that can still take that enthusiasm for, uh, that played dividends for me um, because I was able to kind of, like you said, do that. But there's a lot of guys yeah. who can't, unfortunately, yeah. and, that, and that kind of spirals. So, um, tough. so now we're, kind of in those bonus questions and the bonus questions are, you know, basically, you know, you, you went through school, you made it to the league, um, you know, a place where a lot of cats are not able to, to do. I mean, you've done something that's amazing. So if you can kind of talk about that, to kind of talk about, you know, now your paychecks look a little bit different than your, your stipends. Mm -hmm. um, how did yeah. you manage that? You, you mentioned the, the, uh, you know, symposium as far as, you know, listen to uh, some of the NFL, you know, folks talk about that. What was that like? Yeah, um, I think we we had the opportunity. We had the resources um, at that professional level to really dive in. I, I wouldn't say it's like a lack of resources as far as the NFL's part in terms of getting the information there. Mm -hmm. um, I would say for me, one of the biggest uh, lessons that I learned and what I was really fortunate also is to have like veterans in the locker room to really help lead me through that transition from college to NFL veterans mm -hmm. that I could count on and that, and that, uh, they weren't, they weren't so focused on the fact that I was competition, but really took me under their wing and that that's sure. not in every organization. So I was very fortunate for that. Um, but ultimately just using the resources, uh, to the best of, uh, to the best of your ability. And I think that just, that just comes from, understanding that there is life beyond ball like if you if you're only focused on what you can do on the football field or basketball court if you're only focused on that then um and you're not thinking beyond that then there really is no value that you see in going to go on the extra efforts to go to a financial class you don't really right. see any value in it because your mind isn't even thinking beyond that so i think it starts in the mind to see past it to start to see value in those opportunities and resources, so. Most definitely. Um, so now, you know, again, school, the league, tell everybody what you're doing now. Uh, you, you kind of touched upon it at the beginning, but, you know, selfless plug, what, what's been going on with you now and, yeah. and, uh, and so forth now? Yeah, so uh, I transitioned into coaching independently as a mindset coach, performance and mindset coach. And really, I focus primarily dealing with athletes. And I, uh, I created a program, a coaching program called the Athlete Purpose Playbook. And it's really designed to help athletes find passion, find purpose, find fulfillment beyond the game. I really am 
passionate about the idea of even after beyond sports to have something that you're waking up feeling like it's game day every single day. Um, yeah. That same level of passion that you get during game day and running out the tunnel, like that's yeah. the type of passion and purpose that we want on that next phase. And it it's a program that really goes through like identity training, like helping athletes with that identity crisis that exists, um, helping that uh, helping them to self discover themselves, um, connect with their intuition, connect with that vision beyond uh, beyond the game. And then also just like mental training in terms of like creating winning habits, um, removing blockages, limiting beliefs. Uh, we really go deep into the mental aspect and then leveraging all of that, um, the resources that you got from sports, I mean, the gifts, the lessons, leveraging all of that to then create impact in that next phase in a way that excites you, in a way that's authentic. Yeah. So um, that's what I'm working on now is uh, really putting that course in full play. Uh, we're on our third week. Monday was our third session. It's a 10-week program. And it's something that uh, I'm calling my legacy business. So it's something that's going to be going on forever. And um, soon it won't just be this private group, but it'll be like a public thing and end up uh, being like a, being like online and people can join the community and really go in at their own pace and, and uh, yeah, find, no uh, doubt. create impact beyond the game. Yeah. No doubt. You, uh, you, you got me with that, that visual, man, coming out the tunnel. Because anybody who yeah. knows who, who's come out of the tunnel, that feeling, you know, that, that electric that just goes through your veins. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, to wake up to that every day, that 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 would be powerful. Yeah, man. Yeah, I I, uh, I, I love it. And I, I the reason I created the whole thing was because when I left the game, I didn't know what that pa that next passion was. And I found myself um like really escaping the present moment. I was uh, heavily on my cannabis wave. I wasn't, I was playing video games. Like I wasn't really locked into what was going on. There was a lot of trauma that I wasn't dealing with. And that's what mm -hmm. led me down my path. And um, and so, yeah, like I said, I'm super passionate about that. And it has to be trained, you know, that, that feeling has to be trained. And habits. so that's what a lot of the program is about is creating those habits. Um, creating a new pattern that, uh, you know, of, of waking up, creating routine, feeling those emotions, doing things that creates those elevated emotions and making it a part of your identity and, and really having something to move towards. So that's the cool. foundation of it. Cool, man. Well, hey, man, I appreciate what you're doing, man. Yeah, thank you, Definitely brother. Appreciate I appreciate you. Man. I appreciate what you're doing. This is this is an important conversation that um, all athletes need to hear. Absolutely. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, if we got some young, you know, young current student athletes that listen to us, man, they can, they, you know, gain some of these nuggets uh, that you're sharing. So uh, appreciate that, man. Let's definitely uh, stay in touch. For sure. For sure, man. Thank, thanks for this, man. I appreciate you. Absolutely, man. You take care. You too. Yep.